well, it's nine o'clock. Uh, we have started the recording. Uh, uh, we are ready. OK, um, start again. Yes. OK, welcome to the last session, View 3, View 3 sorry, Biomedical Engineering, Biomimetics Topics. In our Electrical Engineering, Computer Science and Automatic Control Conference, CCI 2022. Please, the audience in the room puts smartphones and silence mode and remote participant disabled microphones. OK, let, let me chance to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Fernando Perez Escamirosa, PH doctor in electrical engineering by Simvestal. Now I full time researcher in the Applied Science and Technology Institute at UNAM in Mexico City. I will be the uh, session chair of this session. I want to thank the organizing, organizing committee for allowing me to lead this session. Now I introduce the first topic with the first speak. Uh, Daniela Avila Cabrera. She is from the Centro de Investigación y de Estudios Avanzados del Instituto Politécnico Nacional. Uh, please, uh, Daniela, perform your presentation in 50. Uh, in 15 minutes maximum, please. And uh, we will not notify you when you remind two minutes, say in two minutes. At the end, in your presentation, we dedicate the five minutes to question and answer. Any question, Daniela? No one. Okay, you can begin with the presentation, please. Perfect. Do you see the, see the screen? Yes. Perfect. Well, let's start. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Daniela, and I'm going to talk about my article titled Clinical and Thermographic Database of Patients with Diabetes Mellitus with Perspective of Quantitative Studies. Let's start. Well, as an introduction, I would like to talk about diabetes mellitus, that is a chronic degenerative disease characterized by uh, an increase in normal glucose levels. Well, in Mexico, 9.17% are currently diagnosed with diabetes, in which 30% have, exp have experiences complications uh, such as diabetic foot. Well, this disease is characterized by um, this increase uh, in normal glucose levels. Uh, we have two types of diabetes. Um, uh, diabetes type one, uh, there is a lack of insulin production in the pancreas and type two, the insulin does not metabolize the glucose. In both ca cases, we have complications. One of them is the vascular problems, which uh, generate arterial calcification, stenosis, which cause tissue damage, such as infection and ulceration, causing diabetic foot and total or partial loss of the lower extremities. Well, um, diabetic foot is a challenging condition to assess in advance before the patient refers symptoms. Early diagnosis could decrease the morbidity statistics arising for a diabetic foot that is not properly managed. Um, some techniques to evaluate the diabetic foot condition are based on medical imaging and uh, uh, with and based on infrared thermography. For that reason, we use this technique in order to evaluate this condition. Um, we know that, um, that uh, 
we know that early diagnosis could decrease the morbidity for each patient. And well, the thermography, the infrared thermography, it's a te technique to measure the superficial skin temperature of the patient, whose fundamental principle is the is a quantity of studies based on the temperature gradient differences. We uh, first of all we search asymmetries between pairs of feet, assuming that non-homogeneity of temperature is an uh, indicator of ischemia. Well, and um, first of all, the objective of this project is the creation of a database of thermographic images on diabetic food, with which each patient has the opportunity to follow up at the, on the therapy applied. As we can see, we have uh, some images, uh, one of them, um, one of them is an infrared uh, image, and the other one, well, is a normal image where we can see the distribution of temperature. And in this case, in figure two, we can see the patient in in the in the study. Uh, we have prospects, and one of them is. Um, provide clinical data in search uh, the correlation between the thermal distribution of the food and the physiology, physiology of each patient diagnosed in order to um, look uh, some uh, data, so some clear data in order to um, classify each uh, patient. patient. Well, talking about methods, we uh, for the selection of um, of patients, the criteria of age and sex were omitted. The studies includes complicated and uncomplicated diabetic patients, and obviously patients with diabetic food and healthy food. This in order to have a complete database to be able to look uh, for differentiating elements of each type of patient. Uh, in this uh, part, we can see uh, four types of patients. Um, examples like uh, diabetic patients, patients with circulatory problems, arterial problems, and healthy patients. As we can see, uh, each patient have a particular characteristics in order to, well, that we can see in order to evaluate uh, the condition. Uh, the studies applied uh, are uh, in this percentage um, we we do the study um, 26 percent of diabetic food patients uh, 26 percent of health patients uh, 30 32 percent of diabetic without um, diabetic food but uh, with this uh, disease um, and 16 percent of circulatory problems well, talking about the database design, well, uh, in order to store each uh, of the patient's results, we design a digital book with additional documents, such as, as a medical note that it's uh, write by the doctor, the, the, the principal doctor, and um, it serves as a backup in case of more data uh, is required in the future. We, we use uh, these um, um, steps in order to have or recuperate the information. Um, we start with uh, taking the personal information, um, taking the physiological parameters, uh, size, temperature, uh, hemoglobin, and heart rate. 
we uh, add all the the data in the in the digital book and add a medical note. And after that, we add the thermal images and save the patient, having um, a data with all the the data of the patient. Talking about um, data acquisition protocol, well, we, um, we first of all we design an informed agreement in order to protect the patient data, and the data acquisition protocol was designed to have repeatability and reprodu reproducibility in the results, and we have this process to do the study. Yes, as we can see. Um, we start with an user manual review. We check the room environment. We do the installation of the scanner ER device. And we sign the informed consent and uh, do all the questions uh, to the patient. Mm, and after that, we start with the acquisition of thermographic images uh, with 15 or 20 minutes approximately. And after that, we we do the biological, we take the biological parameters um, and take all the, the data. And well, in order to to have uh, better results, we do the segmentation part. The thermograms collected in the previous section were cemented, were segmented in order to remove the thermal interferences, the delimit the region of interest and contrast the thermal distribution over the sole of the foot. As we can see at figure 11, we can see the 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 raw thermographic image and in figure 12 we can see that the temperature are more clear in order to um, observe the characteristic of each patient and well these the steps of the segmentation part and talking about the results well we are also achieved do a uh, a database and acquisition of medical information for patients and thermograms that were cemented to appreciate the risk areas. And in this part, we can see uh, some images of patients. Um, first of all, the first one, for example, is with the patients in the in the study. The second, the second one, we take all the, the vital signs with um, medical equipment, with um, uh, all the protocol um, studies. And the last one, well, other one, uh, we take um, the vital signs uh, too. And well, in this case, uh, I would like to, to result the the some results of this project. For example, we note that the temperature uh, the temperature changes. We can note uh, that the superficial temperature is observed in our in our device. So that's an important part to to check the the each patient um, uh, all the correlation between physiological parameters and our images are important because we have a a backup of all the all the information we we have the the um, all the data in order to do uh to do to each patient the the result the observable um, results and well this uh, this protocol and this study are personalized and effective uh, tre treatment in order to do each uh, each treatment for each patient in order to have results 
And well, the disease follow up, it's important because as we can see at the end of the images, we have a patient with a um, number four, um, type four in Scala Wegner. And after that, the treatment and the studies, we'll, we have a patient with a good um, uh, results. And well, it's important to, to result that IR medical thermography has proven to, to be a reliable auxiliary tool. And well, it's important uh, look that process thermal images in this study showed variations that provide us information on each patient. And the correlation of this information with the patient's story can support the doctor decisions to choose an appreciate treatment. And well, uh, the information retrieved of the creation of that data database present in this paper have uh, a minutes. future research can be carried out of the de development of new techniques of the detection of risk areas in diabetic food. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Daniela, uh, for your interesting presentation. Please, uh, 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 the audience with the Microphone ability, please disability, disability this device, please. OK, uh, please, are there uh, any questions for Daniela in this room? Any question? OK, well, uh, thank you very much, Daniela. Let's give a round of applause for the speaker. And uh, let me continue with the following presentation. Thank, thank you very you. much. OK. Uh, let me introduce the second speaker. It's uh, he is uh, Jorge Alberto Rodriguez. Ramírez, from the Centro de Investigación y Estudios Avanzados del Instituto Politécnico Nacional. You are ready, eh, Jorge? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay. Can you see the presentation? Yes. Yes, it is. It's okay. Okay, eh, Jorge, eh, perform your presentation in 50, 10 minutes maximum, please. Okay. We uh, we will notify you when you remain two minutes, uh, saying two minutes. At the end of the uh, at the end of your presentation, we dedicate five minutes to or two minutes mo more to question and answer. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, Jorge, you can begin your presentation, please. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm gonna show you um, my work for this conference. The title of the work is Acoustic and Thermal Analysis in Blood Vessel into Muscle for Pressure Study Related to Cavitation. The order of the presentation is shown in this slide with the starting with the objective of the work. For this paperwork, the aim is to present a simulation of a high to boundary of transducer that generates a focus in muscle tissue with a blood vessel in it to determine acoustic pressure generated and the thermal distribution in both tissues. Beginning with, a, with an introduction, ultrasound has been proved as an effective tool in the application of different therapeutic clinical methods. One of these applications is the opening of the blood brain barrier for the, the delivery of specific drugs. During the application of ultrasound, like in this technique, there is a phenomenon that appears that is called acoustic cavitation. Sometimes this phenomenon is undecided due to the effect that is produced. 
The use of computational systems for the simulations of tissue during ultrasound applications has been done in past year. One of the works is uh, to simulate these, uh, these uh, techniques mentioned before to get an idea of how this could uh, produce the damage in soft tissue. However, talking about the phenomenon of, of acoustic cavitation, there are not, not uh, many works in the simulation field. Most of the work that is shown in this table is related to the experimental work. However, in, in the last year, there are few works about simulation that try to, ex to give an explanation of this phenomenon. In this work, uh, what we propose is a simulation of a hypotransducer boundary and a muscle and vessel tissue model, in which there are two steps of work, the determination of the acoustic propagation in the frequency domain and obtaining the best case of acoustic propagation to determine the thermal distribution that could produce a damage in soft tissue. For the simulation development, starting with the theoretical analysis, we can, we base our work in these equations, starting with the, uh, with the related to the, uh, to the pressure on the radiator surface is related to its normal acceleration, explaining with the equation number one. For the case of the heat propagation, this can be explained with famous by heat thermal equation given by equation mm -hmm. number two, I can call out. For our case, we can determine in this by heat thermal equation, the, the constant Q is we can relate it to the, to the pressure by equation number three. For the simulation work, the tool employed in this case is to solve the equations presented before, the simulation, the simulation was made with the finite element method using the software console multiphysics on a basic workstation with these characteristics. We propose a geometry for the, for the model a 2D geometry uh, design in which there are different components, starting with the hypotransducer boundary of 20 millimeter radius that is shown in the color red. The transmission medium uh, that we selected is water that is uh, pointed with the number well, with the number one. The square showing in the in the center of the of the figure is a smooth muscle a smooth muscle phantom of 12, 12 millimeter per side. Uh, pointed with the number uh, with the number two as a domain two, and inside of this phantom, it is drawn a vessel with a diameter of three millimeters that is shown with the domain number three. The boundary in the blue color are the contour of impedance. This uh, put in the, in the surround of the geometry to avoid reflections in the simulation. Every domain has different uh, different properties properties that were added all the, their acoustic properties and the thermal properties to work. For the discretization of the domain, we use different different measures for every every domain added that they were uh, made according of their wavelength show uh, using the equation number four. The wavelength the value of the mesh uh, obtained according to the wavelength was divided by seven and by five, uh, divided by seven with the smaller size of the mesh, the element of the mesh, and by five as the maximum value of the element of the mesh. Convergence error of 0.01% was obtained comparing with a, a smaller mesh that the divided by seven. That's why we decided to stay in that number. For the analysis made, the simulation was carried out in two parts. The first part is a study in the frequency domain. It was made a parametric sweat of frequencies, starting with 100 kilohertz and finished in 3 megahertz, with the steps of uh, 100 kilohertz to mega analysis and obtain the base case as an, as scenario or frequency distribution map. For the study in time domain, According to the best case scenario in the step before, the heat produced was determined with this with this uh, result. This study was made during a, a time application of 60 seconds. The results obtained in this simulation are the starting with the acoustic pressure propagation 
it is shown in the figure in the, in the right, the acoustic pressure generated by the boundary at a frequency of two megahertz being this, this frequency, the best case scenario of distribu distribution of the pressure in a, in a focus in the, um, in the soft tissue as or better, best result. The transducer was positioned in a way that the focus could abort enough area of both tissues, ideally 50% of every, uh, every element. However, the focus was stronger in the blood vessel. It is due to the characteristics and the properties mentioned before added to the simulation. For this case, oh, the muscular tissue was 3 kilopascals and in the blood vessel was a 9 kilopascal. Although it is difficult to simulate, the gravitation effect, we could assume that a, a, a higher acoustic pressure generate, we, can pro, we could produce a major effect of the phenomenon. About the thermal distribution, the heating of the tissue was performed with the results showed before at acoustic pressure of two megahertz. Initial temper, temperature of the soft tissue was 37.5 Celsius degrees, and the maximum increase obtained in the in, the, in this case, at uh, the higher pressure, was less than seven Celsius degree after the, time, the total time application of 60 seconds. It is important to point out that does not reach a higher temperature of 45 Celsius degree in which it could occur, occur uh, irreversible damage in the tissue. Temperature increases shown in this simulation, although could have an impact in the production of the phenomenon, could not be the most, import, most important factor to be considered these two, these due to the, the characteristics of the phenomenon itself. As a conclusion of this work, the objective of, the, of this paperwork was to present a computational model of the hypotransducer able to generate a focus that covers muscle and vision tissue. Values obtained of acoustic pressure generate and the focus in the muscle was lower than the producer in the blood vessel. Previous results has shown that it has been obtained a stable percentage value probability for acoustic cavitation apparition at higher acoustic pressure. With the acoustic map produced, it was determined a maximum temperature increase of seven Celsius degrees from the initial temperature uh, put it in the simulation. The acoustic pressure and heating distribution obtained in the model could work as a tool for the understanding part of a total reach from the acoustic cavitation phenomenon, which is the main objective of investigation by our investigation group. These are my reference of the work. Thank you all for your attention. And questions? Okay. Jorge, uh, thank you very much for your interesting presentation. Now in this room, uh, I want to ask, are there any, any questions for Jorge? Any doubt? There is a question here. Yes, please. The first one, uh, where, in, in which platform did you develop your, your simulation? In which interface, I mean, in which program? It's a software called Control Multiphysics that will help us to simulate almost every physics uh, problem that you have. In this case, the simulation, it has two parts, the frequency domain to simulate the acoustic pressure and in time domain for the temperature increase. Another one, you, in the introduction, you said, you mentioned the and desired effects of cavitation. Yes. Uh, may you give me an example of them? I mean, you, you, you just mentioned them, but you did not this. Did okay. Uh, I, the concept of cavitation, uh, the most, the, the bigger uh, damage that is the produced damage, damage itself. For example, in boats, uh, big boats, in the Abyss that is you know, under the water, sometimes they are break because of the formation of bubbles. That happens in ultrasound that is called acoustic cavitation. The bubbles explode and release uh, a high pre acoustic pressure that damage surrounding tissue. But the, diff the diff difficult part in this is to determine the damage produced by that. So the 
the small size of the bubbles that, that are created in it. That is like the main, the damage that bubbles form and produce. Any, any question, any other question? No? Okay, well, let's give you a round of applause uh, to the Jorge, please. And let me continue with the follow-up presentation. Um, the third, uh, the, th the third speaker and topic is Marcela Sanchez Osti from the Universidad Autónoma de Querétaro. <clears throat> yes, I'm, I'm here. Can okay. you give me like one minute, please? <laughs> Okay. Sorry. Okay. Hey, Marcela, you are ready? Yes. Mm. Okay. Okay. Can you see the presentation? Yes. Ah, thank you. Okay, Marcela, uh, you perform your presentation in 15 minutes maximum, please. Okay. Uh, will, uh, I will you notify you when you remain two minutes, say in two minutes. At the end of, at, at the end of your presentation, I dedicate uh, five minutes or two minutes to question and answer. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, uh, Marcela, you can begin with the presentation, please. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Marcela Sanchez Osti from the, the Autonomous University of Querétaro. I'm here to expose a research called Comparison of Key Point Detector Methods for Microclassifications, Ray Detection. Um, on breast images, an alternative to SIP. So let's begin. Um, today, the analysis of medical images with CAT system is a big and notorious area of investigation. A good relevant step in creating a CAT system is detecting the region of interest for research. But what is a region of interest? A region of interest is an image area that contains key points. An image key point, or also called feature, uh, is a meaningful structure of the image. They must provide geometric and photometric invariance. When a good uh, region of interest detection is made, it is possible to minimize computational load and avoid non-interest area that could potentially produce nodes. So, um, how are ROIs detected on images? As mentioned before, uh, the first step is to recognize the key points of the image. In the state of art of medical images analysis, the most used key point uh, detector algorithms are sift and sort. Even if they are, have proved to be highly reliable, they are currently patented. So that's why the search of an alternative algorithm is relevant. For this work, we take eight of the most relevant algorithms and analyze their performance on mammography images. The algorithms were FAST, MSER, STAR, ORF, uh, BRIEF, BRIS case, and CASE. Those algorithms uh, are, those. these are algorithms that uh, employs many different methods like Gaussian's mask, thresholding between others, for searching uh, different structures on images, such as corners or bluff structures. So every method gives a different result on the same image. So if we take one image and apply those key point detection algorithms, we are going to have like eight different uh, key points for each image. 
Um, for this work, we take we work with a mini via, mini mias database that contains 322 mammograms at 50 micron resolution in PGM format uh, and associated data. This includes uh, the classification of the abnormality of the image. Uh, this specific database works with classifications, asymmetry, masses, and other things. And localization of abnormalities on the breast. Thus, we are take uh, just 25 images where there are micro classifications uh, areas. Uh, those images are this in the table uh, in in the right side. We can see an image that is the MDB 209 that was like uh, that is. The, the first uh, image that we use, and it's an example of how our database is constru constructed. So for this method, for the methodology, we use Python uh, 3 and OpenCV in Jupyter Notebook. Uh, the first step is selecting an image of the database and applying uh, Im image announcement by filtering, thresholding, and applying a uh, <laughs> a contrast limited uh, adaptive histogram equalization. Here is where the key point detector algorithms extracts the key point, and then uh, the, we apply the k mean algorithm for this algorithm returns a level with the number of clusters for each of the key points uh, already detected. So the region of interest is cut using the minimum and maximum point of each cluster. Finally, an, an analysis ex executed considering if the micro classifications area belongs to a region of interest or not. <laughs> the time of execution and number of points are also considered for this analysis. Let's see the results. As mentioned before, the image announcement uh, was made with three principal steps. First, a Gaussian filter uh, helps to reduce the amount of noise present on the image. Subsequently, the thresholding allowed to well defined by eliminating the kind of like fog uh, around the bust edge. Finally, a contrast limited adaptive histogram equalization uh, allowed to create a contrast between the lightest and the darkest area of the image, enhancing the structures that we are that we are sucked. Uh, in this classifications, in this case, uh, we are searching for calcifications. So this can be seen as a small uh, dot on the mammogram, the small white dots on the mammograms. Here is an example of how uh, key, points, key points are identified on the image. Then we can make a k in a grouping algorithm and cut a section that now we can call regions of interest. Uh, we can see on this image that the interest area, uh, the area with micro classifications, is inside the yellow circle and we have a green, yellow, uh, green region of interest that encloses that area. And that's the, the, the point of what we are searching for. In the next two tables, we can observe the analysis of each method. The first four columns uh, refer to allocation of the micro classification on the image. The parameter fits is only a verification of if the micro classifications area is inside of the previously cut right or not. This was analyzed for each image and each of the selected methods. So this is the first four and the other four. Also, we check the time of execution and the mean number of points generated for each method, where the faster was fast and the less point generated was a star. Uh, the detection of regions of interest is just the first step in the way of detecting and classification and classificating micro classifications, it is necessary to search for an optimal key point detector uh, that, first of all, and most important, uh, includes the micro classification area on the region of interest detected. We are searching for 
not have any error on on cutting this region of interest because it's just the first step so we can generate a bias uh, if we have mistakes on this step second uh, it is important to minimize the time of execution searching for a faster algorithm and for this same reason we are trying to minimize the key points generated so it's a reduction Uh, this is the final table with the methods order for the best two words, which uh, includes the results for each of it. So, as shown, us, as shown the best of eight methods was brisk, with a good performance in time and fitting. Uh, FAST was really efficient, but has a reducing features because uh, this method is characterized for, for even if they work uh, faster than other methods, uh, it makes just um, analysis of the neighborhood around the interest pixel. And this is not always as precise as other methods that employs other um, uh, methods as Gaussian and so. Also, if we see the number of points, a star gives us 77 points, which is which is the lowest number of points out of all methods, but it also has a high level of uh, failure. This could be because the stars uh, usually search for blob structures, big blob structures on an image, and we are searching for something like little or small. So this could be the reason. Uh, so uh, it is important to point out that the order of the third and the fourth methods in table in this table was decided not only considering feeding, but time of execution. It is considered that case times of execution was too high. Also, it's precise to point out that depending on is the on the application, there are alternatives to brace as a case of fast grief that could generate a good result, but in this specific case, it is not recommended. So, uh, this previous analysis brings uh, that uh, brisk among the analyzed methods, what's the best choice for region of interest expression on mammography, because it included all microclassifications area inside of the region of interest, also, it is a good. Uh, it has a good time of execution uh, compared with the rest of methods and doesn't identify too many points. It gives a good alternative to shift and sort in medical images. Also, we can see that the image preprocessing uh, provides a good characteristics announcements, allowing to the key points detector algorithms to make an optimal detection. Um, this generates a good result with the k-mean algorithms. It is important to remark that this analysis only applies to mammography images with the purpose to search for microclassification. So for a future work, uh, the automatic detection and classification of microclassification presents a great challenge today. Uh, although there are currently various um, varied combinations of artificial intelligence methods for this task, the selection of regions of interest uh, will allow images to be cropped before the implementation of an intelligent model, eliminating regions that could generate false positive, reducing executing uh, time and training. It is intended to carry out a study that allows to determine which artificial intelligence uh, techniques have a good performance for the detection of microclassifications in mammograms with the processing proposed in, the, in this article. So that's it. Thank you very much for the attention. You can start with the questions now. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Marcela, for your interesting presentation. Uh, in the audience, uh, are there any questions for Marcela? Please. Any doubt? Yes. Uh, good morning, Marcela. I have a question of your work. Why uh, you didn't implement a segmentation 
before uh, uh, the application of the client, for example, to uh, cut the region and eliminate the muscle tissue or the pectoral tissue? Mm, um, I proved an NIMA segmentation before uh, uh, implemented this, uh, this uh, method, but it was not too good for what we are searching for because the structure of uh, uh, the size of the structures that we are uh, searching in this work is like little, very, very small. And when we try to make a segmentation, uh, even with a uh, high thresholding, for example, we get uh, an, it, an elimination of uh, regions of interest of the images. So it, it was like a, a little complicated to make tasks. This and it, it was tried, but was not an optimal uh, idea. I, I don't know if I, if this is if you can understand what I'm saying, sorry. Okay. Uh, another question is that which were the parameters do you use for the client? Sorry, can you repeat the question? It's like a uh, really low volume. What were the parameters did you use for the client? Oh, yes, I, I use uh, 50 and 200, I, I believe, with a tile size of five. Thank you, Marcel. You're welcome. Uh, any other any other question? No. Okay, uh, let's give uh, applause for, for Marcela, please. And now let's continue with the... Sorry? Okay, well, let's continue with the following presentation. Let me... Activate your microphone, Fernando. Ah, sorry, sorry. Sorry, uh, let's continue with the following presentation. And let me introduce the speaker, Dalila Rivera Córdoba, from the Centro de Investigación y Estudios Avanzados del Instituto Politécnico Nacional. Hi, Dalila. Hi, um, Fernando. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, uh, Darila, perform your presentation in 50 minutes maximum, please. Uh, I will notify you when you remain two minutes, say in two minutes, okay? At the, fin and the, at the end or at the final of your presentation, I dedicate uh, five minutes to question and answer. Yes? Yes. Okay, Dalila, uh, you can begin with your presentation, please. Hello everyone, good morning. My name is Dalila Rivera Cordova. <laughs> and I'm going to present you the work title 
automatic delineation algorithms of ECG as the electrical activity weights based on the continuous weight of transport with the splines. Currently, cardiovascular diseases are a leading cause of death worldwide. The use and development of automatic algorithms for the delineation of characteristic points of ECG waste contribute to the diagnosis and treatment of these diseases. Most known characteristics of the P wave and the PR interval have been uh, corresponding sorry, to the atrial electrical activity have been associated to the atrial fibrillation. Therefore, the automatic delineation of the P wave and the R, R wave helps to monitor and analysis the long-term recordings. Several algorithms for the delineation of the P-way characteristic points have been developed. Well, these methods are based on the Fourier-based filtering, wave transform, parcel transform, phase-free stationary, Bayesian approach and a partial recollective sampler, discrete wave transform with correlation analysis of templates, Low pass differentiation, dynamic time warping, wave transform with evolutionary algorithms, and support vector machine. With respect to the wave transform, it provides a description of the temporal characteristics of the signal at different scales or frequency bands. Also, this helps to reduce the influence of noise, artifacts, and baseband drift. Uh, this using the appropriate scale. The continuous wave transform it helps is defined sorry, as the convolution of a time continuous signal with a wavelength function time shifted by a translation and a parameter B uh, and a scale parameter A. a. To evaluate the continuous wave transform. At uh, any integer scale, we use splines, which are quite flexible functions that helps to that, that helps to this. These functions are constructed from these functions are constructed from polynomial segments of degree m and unit length connected in a way to ensure the continuity of the resulting function and its derivative of two order. We use these. Uh, wavelength function, the field derivative of a base plane of fourth order expanded by a factor of two. This function uh, is well is well localized in both frequency and time. This is because it's similar to a Gaussian function. Gaussian function. The scale selection is, in, is plays an important role. This is because since its selection. I'm sorry, will produce a dilatation or compression on the function wavelet. Here we can see in the figure number four the given the filter bandwidth at a sampling frequency of uh, 250 hertz. And in the table number one, we can see the bandwidth at minus three decibel of the equivalent digital filters. In the scale one, three, seven, eight, nine, and ten. In the case, so in the case, sorry, for the scale number eight, we have 3.6 uh, to 12.2. For 10, we have 2.9 to 9.8. And here we can see the algorithm development for the R wave peak detection. For this, uh, for this detection, the first step is to find the first two PMM, W, w max and W min for the first two seconds. Then we have to define the, with this we define the thresholds. And then we, we have to find the first two PMM above the, these thresholds, U max and U min. When we have this, we, we, they define the their zero crossing because these zero crossings are the are the fields to peaks of the R wave peak. And um, for for determining the the next following sorry, when we determine the fields to peaks of the R wave, we also determine the R R and R R V as well as their head rate. And then we can look for the next for the next uh, peak of the R wave. 
piece we use using at the beginning a window of search, pero a, win, a search window of 200 milliseconds. And um, if the PMM um, is greater than the U max that you mean, we the treasure are still calculated and we did the thresholds. Well, uh, here for the algorithm development, development for the Q wave onset that pink delineation, we use the location of the R wave peak because from here we are, we perform a backward search, uh, a backward search window. To find the first, um, to find the first zero crossing, then we apply another backward searching to find another, to find the second back, uh, the second zero crossing that it will be the Q, QE that is the start of the Q wave. And for the P wave onset peak and then delineation. For this delineation, we need the location of the R wave peak because um, from here we are going to do a backward search window. Here and we are going to look for the for the WP max and W here WP max and WP mean and their zero cross their zero crossing because the zero crossing is the the peak of the P wave. Uh, then we to distinguish between the start of the P wave and the end of the P wave, we realize uh, the window from WP mean to the start of the window and where the value is is equal or or higher than UP1, there is the start of the P wave. And then we and then for the final of the P wave, we realize a window from the WP max to the final of the window. And where if the value is equal or greater than UP2, UP2, sorry, UP2, there is the end of the P wave. These are my results for the validation of the R wave peak detection that I. I did it in 11 records with different electrocardiography trace morphologies. Here we have a positive QRS, uh, uh, negative QRS, the results on the 11 records, and we obtain a sensitivity of 99.56%, a positive productivity of 99.91%, and an error rate of 0.33%. The result for the P for the P wave delineation for the for this validation we use every records from the QT database. Also from for the validation of the R wave we use the QT database. Well, uh, here we use as I say ED records, and here in the table number three we can see the total difference of manual experts and automatic algorithms annotation of the P wave onset and then. And here is a segment of easy recording from this database with different morphologies. The performance of the algorithm for the peak, for the peak of the feed wave obtain a sensitivity of 99.61%, a positive productivity of 99.83%, and an error rate of 0.41%. Here I use 18 record. 80 18, sorry, 18 <laughs> records from the QT database. And here we have the total average of difference of manual experts annotation and automatic algorithms annotation of the P wave onset and end. And here I have the comparison of the P wave with, with another outdoors. We can see that uh, I obtain a higher sensitivity and positive, um, positive predictive than JP Martinez. Higher positive uh, sensitivity than L. Marzanova, R. N. Costandi, and L. Saclova. 
and a positive predictivity similar to LMRSANOVA and higher than RN Costandi and LSACLOVA. These are my conclusions. Well, this method allows to use a wide range of scales and to reduce the influence of noise artifacts and baseline drift in the ECG. It is using the appropriate scales and the developed algorithm has been validated with ECG recording from the QT database representing a total of 354 bits for QR detection, 651 bits for, for the pin wave peak detection, and 2,683 bits for P wave onset and end delineation. These results obtained are comparable with those of other published algorithms, and I can detect R wave and P wave peaks with high sensitivity. The errors in the delineation of the P-wave onset and end are within the tolerance limited for deviation from manual measurements by CCA, CCE experts. And these algorithms allow to measurement and analysis of ECG atrial electrical activity represented by the P-wave and PR interval mainly in long-term recordings clinically useful for car cardiac, cardiac diagnostic and prognostic. And that's all. Uh, your friends, um, thank you for your attention. Any questions? Thank you, Dalila. Thank you thank for you. your interesting presentation. And well, in the room, there are any questions for Dalila? Any question? Any, any doubt? Okay, well, let's give uh, applause to Lalila, please. And well, sorry. Okay, let me continue with the following presentation. The next, uh, the next speaker is uh, Edel Serafin Hernandez Gomez from the National Institute of Optical Atrophysics and Electronics from Mexico. You are you are here, Edel Serafin? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Well, Edel, uh, perform your presentation in 15 minutes maximum, please. We, uh, I will notify you when you remain two minutes, say in two minutes. Uh, and the final, and the final of the, on of your presentation, sorry, uh, I dedicate five minutes to question and answer. Any 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 doubt? Any question? No, I got it. Okay, uh, you can begin with your presentation, please. Can you see my PowerPoint? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So good morning. Um, uh, my name is Edel Serafin Fernandez Gomez, and I'm going to present this topic called microwave dielectric spectroscopy for determination of ethanol concentration in brandy. Authors of this work are Edel Serafin Hernández Gómez, José Luis Olvera Cervantes, y Nefi David Pava Chipol. Contents, introduction, dielectric properties, methodology, uh, methodology results, conclusion, and references. Okay, introduction. Uh, alcoholic drinks are popular products that are consumed around the world for different purposes, such as entertainment, religious, uh, religious reasons, and so on. Um, brandy is a drink that is made from the distillation of wines from 100% uh, grape must, whose distillate must undergo a maduration process in oak, white oak, or oak wood containers. For a minimum period of six months, its alcoholic content it is uh, 35 to 55%. Um, in Mexico, according to the National Survey on the Consumption of Drugs, Alcohol, and Tobacco, Brandy ranked second among the most consumed alcoholic drinks. So it's important to say that ethanol is one of the main components of alcoholic drinks. Ethanol content is alcoholic drinks. Uh, has uh, been measured by several techniques such as gas chromatography mass spectrometry, 
HNMR spectrometry, thermal infrared enthalpimetry, near infrared spectrophotometry, electrochemical and CM biosensors, digital image based method, membraneless gas liquid separation flow system, freight bed scanner, and automated digital image analysis, propagating waves, reversible solid sensor, and colorimetric oscillating signals. Um, so, um, it is worth to mention that there are a few works about microwave dielectric spectroscopy, and this could be a fast and cheap technique to measure ethanol content. So, uh, regarding microwave dielectric spectroscopy, models aimed to ethanol content determination using dielectric polarization parameters have been established by means of simple linear regression. The evaluation of the obtained models was only carried out with training samples, samples used for the creation of the model, and the test samples were not used, samples not included in the creation of the model. So, the objective. The objective of this work was to dielectrically characterize several liquid samples with different concentration of ethanol in precedent in order to determine this concentration using a, statistic, a statistical technique that employs as independent variables dielectric relaxation parameters. Okay, dielectric properties. Uh, the complex relative permittivity uh, can be expressed in terms of the dielectric constant and loose factor. The dielectric constant is defined as a measure of the ability of a material to store electromagnetic energy. So the um, loss factor is characterized by the amount of electromagnetic energy converted into heat in a material. Um, the most common models used to describe the electrical behavior of aqueous electrolyte solutions are the by cold coal and cold Davidson, but these can be represented by harley negami relaxation model. Um, these are the parameters of the model, but I, I want to I want to highlight the dielectric constant on the direct current because this is the, the parameter that is used for the model. The rest of the parameters are eliminated by the um, correlation model and the backward elimination during the multiple linear regression. So methodology. Uh, in this uh, work, we use the open coaxial probe. So the open coaxial probe is pressed against a solid or immersed in a liquid, and the reflection coefficient is measured to determine the permittivity. Um, this is the, in a way, the database, and uh, 19 samples were prepared for this work. The characteristics are shown in table one. Um, in this work, uh, data ingestion, data cleaning, model training, and candidate model were implemented. Uh, in data ingestion, information was obtained to create a model. Anomaly detection and eliminating duplicate were considered in data cleaning. Uh, model training was carried out using correlation metrics and backward elimination in multiple linear regression. Finally, the model was created with training samples. And the, in candidate model evaluation, the model was evaluated with testing data. Uh, result, uh, for data ingestion, we use these, uh, these parameters. Parameters were obtained from the, from the samples. And uh, in data cleaning, uh, an Aulian detection was carried out, which was based on the local Aulian factor method on the data. The samples identified as a typical were E7, E8, E9, and E11. For model training, we implemented the Pearson correlation coefficient matrix. And later, we implemented the backward linear, um, backward elimination, sorry, during multiple multiple linear regression, and at the end of this process, we we use or we select selected the the parameter that is called uh, the electric constant under DC. So in this in Figure Four, 
we present the ethanol concentration prediction model. And for candidate model evaluation, we use uh, these three matrix, three metrics, sorry, MSE, the mean score error, the RMSE, the root mean score error, and R2, the determination coefficient. And these were the results. So, the ethanol concentration prediction is carried out considering the dielectric constant on the direct current as the fissure. The mean square error of this model generated is lower than that of the model presented in literature. The results of this work could be used for the design of microwave, microwave microscopy sensor aimed to measure ethanol content cheap and fast. So uh, these are the references and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Edel. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your interesting presentation. Thanks. So in the room, uh, there are any questions for Edel? Well, I have a, a question. Yes. In, compa in, compar in, in comparison with the massa spectrometry that you mentioned, yes. th this method is more uh, cheaper, more difficult. The, the analysis of the or the processing of data is complex. What what ways ways to point of view? Yeah. Well, I think that that the. The data process is, in a way, um, is um, is easy. And, okay. uh, yeah, it's easy, but the, the problem is that it's not so accurate that aspect, uh, the the method that you that you set. This is in a way the yeah the error. Okay. So, but the the data process is in a way is easy. But the error is more than. Uh, Spectrometry. Yes. Yes. No. I, I I can I can say that um, uh, according to uh, dielectric spectrometry, mm -hmm. this is uh, the best model that we can yeah. that we can find in the literature. But if I compare mm -hmm. this with other techniques, uh, mm -hmm. we need to to improve the the error in a way. Yes. Okay. So, uh, are there any questions for Edel? No? Well, please, let's give uh, applause for, for Edel, for the speaker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, well, uh, now let's continue with the final uh, presentation. Who I want to introduce the final speaker Cecilia Gabriela Rodríguez Flores uh -huh, from Universidad Autónoma de Querétaro Mexico you are you are here Cecilia yes I am here good morning good morning okay Cecilia uh, perform your presentation in 15 minutes maximum please I will not notify when you remain remain two minutes, uh, say in two minutes. At the end of the, your presentation, I dedicate the last five minutes to question and answer. OK? OK. OK, uh, Cecilia, you can begin with, with the presentation, please. Thanks. Thank Good you. morning, everyone. My name is Cecilia Gabriela Rodriguez Flores, and I'm going to present you the topic of a survive of a progress in deep learning techniques for the detection and classification of mammography abnormalities. There are the points that we will be talking about in this presentation. Introduction. In developing countries, there is a higher percent of mortality in the female population because it is usual to detect at a very advanced stage. According to the World Health Organization, WHO breast cancer is estimated to be the leading cause of death in women with more than 2.2 million cases in 2020 and some 
685,000 women died for the disease. Literature review. A. Imaging modality, mammography. Laboratory studies are an indispensable tool to evaluate the patient state of the health, as is the case with mammography, which is an X-ray imaging modality used to classify solar changes in the breast tissues. This modality is commonly used by medical specialists as a tool to obtain a better visualization of edge press through the visualization of the mediolateral oblique view, MLO, and the calocranial view, double C. By red system. In addition, in addition, pardon, sorry, <laughs> it has a standardized press lesion categorization system known as press imaging reporting and data system by red which was created by the American College of Radiology, ACR. This system is divided into six categories, which are commonly implemented for the interpretation of mammary results, as it provides a specialist with a guide to define the degree of suspicions of any abnormality, reducing discrepancy in interpretation. The following table shows each of the categories where the category increases the probability of having breast tissues abnormalities also increases. And the figure four shows the abnormalities present in categories three, four, and five of the virus system. Methodology. This creature is focused on the breast cancer classification using deep learning techniques. The following points are considered while developing this article. Types of data set used to for deep learning classification models, which can be public and private database. Metrics used to evaluate breast cancer models like accuracy, precision, etc. Present type of deep learning classifier used for breast cancer, and the most relevant articles published since 2016 were selected. Uh, mm -hmm. For this reason, several well known multidisciplinary scientific websites like uh, Nature, Springer, IEEE Explorer, CERA, are explored using keywords such as breast cancer in mammography for detection and classification of suspicious abnormalities and methods using deep learning schemes. Public data sets of mammograms. Uh, public database plays an important role in the development of algorithms aiming at the detection and diagnosis of memory lesions. The following data sets are implemented in many investigation studies due to containing cases with suspicious and non suspicious lesions of the patients, where the suspicious lesions include several types of lesions like calcification, masses, asymmetries, and distortions. Mammographic Image Analysis Society MIAS, which contains 322 images in .pgm format with MLO view. Digital Database for Screening Mammography, DDSM, contains about 2,500 studies. Each study includes two images of each breast with MLO and double C view. Dataset of breast mammography images with messes in breast has a total of 115 cases, from which 90 cases are from women with both breasts affected, and 25 cases are from mastectomy patients. Acute contours made by specialists are also provided in XML format. Cured breast imaging subset of DDSM, CBIS DDSM, which contains 400 images uh, that data set is a modified that standardized version of TDSM. An image of CBIS TDSM are uncompressed and converted into diconform with MLO and double CPU. And breast cancer digital repository BCDR contains cases of 1,734 patients with MLO and double CPU. Each image is in .t format. Artificial intelligence. Early detection of abnormalities possible precursor of breast cancer often possess great challenges, 
as these abnormalities often go noticed by the human eye due to different causes such as the morphology of the abnormality, predestiny, etc. Consequently, computer-aided detection and diagnosis systems have been developed in the past two decades to assist radiologists in the detection and diagnosis of lesions seen on the breast imaging exams. Those provide a second opinion. CAD systems are classified in two groups, computer-aided detection system and computer-aided diagnosis system. CAD are systems used for localization of lesions uh, in medical image. Moreover, CADX system perform the categorization of the lesion, for example, the distinction between benign and malignant tumors. Artificial intelligence, in a specific deep learning techniques, have been implemented together with preprocessing techniques to detect and diagnose mammograms with a high degree of contained malignant abnormalities. That represent a promising avenue to provide a reference for the radiologists. Metrics. It is common to use metrics to evaluate the performance of the models. These metrics are the most used in deep learning application focused on the medical area. Accuracy is the metric that measures the performance of an algorithm. Precision is the metric that allows to quantify the number of correct predictions made. Sensitivity or recall shows the proportion of positive cases correctly classified. Specificity shows the proportion of correctly classified negative cases. F1 score calculates the Harmon measure of the metrics precision and sensitivity. Curve ROC uh, is the radio of the set of false positive to the set of true positive. Area under the curve where the probability of correctly categorized uh, positive class is determined. This study survived several scientific articles on suspicious regions detection in mammograms using thin learning techniques. One of the main points of this work is to analyze different approaches under three central perspective, future extraction, articles use, and data set applied to carry out experiments to detect and classify suspicious region in mammograms. This table shows a compilation of various scientific investigation corresponding to the detection and classification of breast cancer. It is made by up of six columns among which are database, classification, method use, task, results, and reference. It is important to highlight the first article of the table, where for the first time, the classification was made by means of the categories of the pirate system. Also, the other articles in this table show great results in their corresponding metrics. Uh, this table is a continuum of the previous table, where you can also see the implement data sets, their corresponding classification, method use, that result, and reference. This slide presents the result of the previous table in a more visual way, where the results were grouped according to the different metrics, like accuracy, where the models with the better result have a stronger color. The results obtained by the means of the sensitivity and specificity metrics are shown in the figure eight, where in the most of the models, a higher value is obtained in specificity, where while only the article 14 was the opposite case. The models in which the precision metrics is used, only two of them obtain results greater than 19%. And on the other hand, Future 9 shows the result of the area under the curve, where in the most of the models provide results higher than 75%, where only Article 22 was the opposite case. In addition, there are many studies to, that focus on classified breast density, because having a high breast density has a greater probability of not detecting any abnormality in the breast. 
This table shows a compilation of various scientific investigations corresponding to the identification of the types of the density present in the breast tissues. It is made up of six columns, among which are database, classification, method use, tax performance, results, and reference. It can be seen that the first four articles uh, provide results greater than 90%. Conclusion, this review provides an overview of the current status of this problem and the various methods based on deep learning to address it. Image processing and deep learning techniques have progressed and expanded significantly in the medical field, especially diagnosis imaging. These advances have greatly influenced computer-aided diagnosis system to detect and classify suspicious regions from mammograms. Does provide a second opinion for the doctors. Future work. The area of technology has become more relevant in the field of medicine due, due to, to the various advances that had been presented in favor of the timeline diagnosis to the patients. As is the case of several studies that have been conducted around the world to determine that deep learning techniques provide satisfactory results concerning to the early detection and classification of breast cancer. However, even with a large number of documents on the detection and classification of breast cancer, using various artificial intelligence techniques, many of these ideas tend not to materialize because they don't provide uh, standard information about possible precursor abnormalities of breast cancer. Mm. For that reason, a general model supported by a medical standard for the tax of concealing in the interpretation of mammograms has not yet been defined and implemented. Therefore, it is invited for the future world to facilitate interpretation for medical person. Um, there are the reference used for this article. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Cecilia, for your interesting uh, presentation. So in the room, there are any questions for Cecilia or the speaker? Any question? Okay, well, let's give a applause for, for this speaker, the last speaker. Thank you very much, Cecilia. Thanks. Okay, well, finally, I want to invite you to see the present or the all the presentation on the Congress on the YouTube website later. Uh, thanks to all for you attending this last session. See you in the CCA 2023 conference. And well, applause, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much.